great title track from our guest right here. His name is Marlon Saunders and Enter My Mind right here on The Upper Room with Joe Kelly and WVOF in Fairfield, Connecticut. And uh, we definitely want to thank Marlon Saunders for taking time to to uh, come up from New York City and, and pay a visit to WVOF. So how's things? Things are good, Joe. And it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me yeah. here great, today. Great to finally meet you. I know we've been yeah. trying to get things settled for, for an interview, but, you know, just from talking with uh, Michael, who is uh, your manager here, yeah. and, uh, you know, a lot of things going on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so he, you've been traveling in between some of the biggest cities. What, what's been happening lately? Let's first talk about the CD, which which came out uh, the latter part of last year. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, a lot's been happening. You know, it, it came out, and um, I actually just had this intention of, of doing the record, and, you know, I just wanted to release the record of stuff that I had written. And I just thought, hey, I'm going to release it, sell a few thousand units, be done. And uh, it kind of came out. And uh, it got all this great, you know, press, and people started talking about it, and we started getting responses of people wanting to to hear it live, and and we played it live, and you know, I I kind of started enjoying that, playing it live, and the next thing you know, we're yeah we're <laughs> moving it around, and we're touring, and we're getting ready to go back out, you know, next week. We take we've taken two months off, mm-hmm. you know, just to to rest and to regroup and to rethink things, but. Um, Next weekend starts it back up. We're going to be hitting uh, Pittsburgh and then going to Baltimore. And, so uh, those are some uh, newer spots? Pittsburgh playing? is new. Baltimore okay. is an old uh, spot that we're okay. going back to called the New Haven Lounge, which is a great place. A lot of love there. So so, so where where's the date in uh, Baltimore and Pittsburgh? Uh, Pittsburgh is the Shadow Lounge, and that's Friday. I think that's the 20th. Friday, I think, is the 23rd. Okay. And um, Sunday will be in Baltimore at the Shadow Lounge. No, I'm sorry. Baltimore at the New Haven Lounge. And that is uh, the 25th. And I think that's at 4 o'clock. Okay. We do two sets there. So uh, you can go to uh, Marlon's website right now. Marlon Saunders, M-A-R-L-O-N Saunders, S-A-U-N-D-E-R-S dot com. And uh, all the info's up there really well together. Uh, put together site thanks right there <laughs> got the got the nice pictures and you know i was really amazed at uh and also the tour dates right there so that's really important yeah and, yeah and you'll have the cd available for sale at the at the show oh yes yeah? oh yes we have it for, for sale at the shows of course you can get it at amazon.com cdbaby.com it's also in in you know the stores like virgin and tower right. and, so you did your homework before releasing this oh no doubt i <laughs> yeah, had to you know yeah you did it right yeah so, so I was saying that uh, I was really amazed by going to some of your discography there and the oh. work <laughs> besides your own uh, CD right here. I mean, working with a band out of New York, Jazz Hole. Yeah. And uh, you know, let, let's talk about that, and then we'll get back okay. to your album. And then we'll talk about. We got a lot to talk about. Yeah. But, uh, yeah let's talk about thing. Jazz Hole, uh, which you guys put out a few albums, right? All right. Yeah, we've had actually Jazz Hole has four mm-hmm. releases. The the first one is called uh, Jazz Hole, and it was released on Mesa Blue Moon, which um, was part of Atlantic Records. And the second was called And the Feeling Goes Round. Uh, and then the last two, the first being Black Burst and then Circle of the Sun, okay, uh, which is the latest one, are on Beave Music, which are two independent uh, labels. And you work together with them as well. That's and, correct, uh, yeah. Co-produce, I co-write. And I, I'm one of the vocalists on the group. The group Jazz Hole is like a, an eclective mm-hmm. ensemble, you know. It started out as um, a merging of acid jazz. So there was like jazz and there was soul and there was hip-hop elements all combined into one. Mm-hmm. And when we first started out, the band was like 10 to 12 people strong because the front people you had maybe three vocalists, four rappers, horn players, and then the basic rhythm section. Right, right. So the first two CDs... Uh, combine those two things. And then the third CD, Black Burst, tends to be a little more on an electronica ambient tip, you know. And the fourth one also has, you know, some electronic elements, but then it tends to take more of a world beat uh, type of feel to it as well. And uh, their website is jazzhole.com? Jazzhole.com. Right. And uh, marlinsaunders.com. Marlon Saunders is here. And uh, we listened to the kickoff track, Enter My Mind. You, you, you talked about the songwriting, and you had, had all these songs in the, the Marlon Saunders vault. <laughs> uh, you know, what instruments do you primarily write on? Keyboard. 
keyboard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I know you, you were classically trained yeah. back, back uh, yeah. when, when did you first grasp into music and, and really fall in love with it? I actually um, started playing. I played in a church. I grew up playing in the church by ear at like five. Okay. So I played and sang like ever since I can remember. And uh, my first formal training was actually, my first formal training was on the saxophone when I was nine. I started taking lessons. Then I started taking piano lessons when I was about uh, 11 or 12. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of played ever since, you know. And and you were born in Maryland? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Eastern Shore, Maryland, a small town um, called Chestertown off of the... The Chester River and the Bay, Chesapeake Bay, and all of that. So, fishermen, farmen, right? You know, farming. You, you didn't that. have the CD release party back out there. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Though we had a slamming picnic, oh, like okay. at the end of uh, the summer last year, because we did the Eastern Shore Chestertown Jazz Festival. We okay. went down and did that, and so my parents they uh, put together this big uh, picnic, you know, for the band and everybody. It was slamming. <laughs> so that's nice to go, go back home. Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah. Well, well, a, a fellow who you wrote on this, Sean Lucas, right? Oh yeah, yeah. On, uh, I, you know, I, I was gonna get in a little funk here that you do on here. Keep doing what you do. Oh yes, yes, yes. Um, talk about how you guys got together to co-write a lot of the stuff on the record. Yeah, Sean Lucas is um, really, really known, like in the the dance world. You know, he does a lot of remixes um, from like Britney Spears to Cher to I think he's done like Madonna. But I knew Sean because he would hire me a lot of times to sing backgrounds on dance tunes. Mm-hmm. So I'd known him over the years, but I was always intrigued by his, his orchestration and how he could play like seven or eight instruments. So I just thought to myself, hmm, when I started working on this, I said, you know, I always call him, Brother Lucas, Brother Lucas, you want to write? And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. So we just kind of started working on music together, not necessarily for the project, but just writing for other artists. Right. And then when we started for this project, it was great because we would, like, have a groove or, like, one part of the chorus. And then we kind of, like, go in respective corners and just write. Like, he'd come up with, the group, like, the rest of the chords, and I'd write the lyrics. And then we'd come back and put it together, and then we'd have the song, you know. So yeah. I really like yeah. working with Sean because it's like we don't have to say much. It just kind of clicks. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great collaboration here from yeah. Enter My Mind. And, and we'll dig into this one. This is called Keep Doing What You Do from Marlon Saunders. He's right here in the upper room with Joe Kelly and WVOF. All right, it's all right to get funky <laughs> on a Sunday afternoon as Gosh, we're here. At WVOF 88.5 FM in Fairfield, Connecticut, the upper room. And Marlon Saunders has joined us for an interview music special and Thanks yeah. to come here and, you know, Michael, your manager here as well. Yeah. And, uh, we'll get him on the mic. Maybe. I was about to say, he's, <laughs> he's not on the mic. I can't believe that. Yeah, but he's a great guy taking care of business for you and making sure yeah, things that's are true. working right. That's and, true. That's uh, very good. Uh, that was Keep Doing What You Do and some great uh, organ on there. And, yeah. uh, you know, you grew up in the church and everything, but let me let me ask you, mm-hmm. uh, the first concert you ever attended, do you remember? Yes. The first concert I attended was um, in D.C., Washington, D.C., and it was at the, I think it's the Lincoln Theater, and I must have been, I think I was like seven, mm-hmm. and it was on one show. Right. The Dells, the Manhattans, the Whatnots, the main ingredient, and uh, who am I forgetting? No, I think that was it. They were all on one show. Wow. Oh, right. and the OJs. Oh, so you had it. And I just was like... I couldn't believe it. Uh huh. I just couldn't believe it. It's like unbelievable. Right. So, the, so that you had, must have had a lot of great shows out there, right? Yeah. yeah. My my, um, my aunt Joan used to live in D.C. and D.C. is not far um, from where I grew up. And then she took me to see Ahmad Ahmad Jamal. Mm-hmm. You know, and then they used to have all those big um, R and B fests. You know, when you could yeah, like right. just go and hear music all day long. You pay like. You know, a feed again, and you could hear all this music, local music, you know, big acts, and everybody was just all there together. So it was great. A lot of good music. Frankie Beverly. Right. And Maze. Yeah, they had those those summer tours. I remember yeah. seeing those. Yeah, like the Budweiser Super That's right. Fest. That's yeah. right. And, um, you know, you, you're going out on tour. You, yes. you mentioned you took a little break. And um, how about going back out on tour when you haven't, for two months or whatever, getting the band together? Uh, what goes into preparation before your, your schedule coming up? Yeah, you know, I, a lot of it is um, just making sure everybody's available, right. you know, because that's the thing. It's like 
most of the musicians that I have, you know, in my band, Carl Carter is the bass player and the musical director. So he's in demand, you know, Joe Scott is the keyboard player. He's played with everyone. You know, Steve Williams is the drummer. Uh, Chris Herbert is the horn player. And and then I have Bitty Strawn and Arif uh, St. Michael. So it's trying to get everybody together to see if we can all coordinate the times first. Oh, yeah. And then figuring out, you know, uh, do we want to do the same songs? Do we want to add some new stuff? Do we want to change the arrangements up? You know, uh, me, it takes me like working on vocal stamina, you know, being back in the place where I'm going to do this each night and be able to keep the energy up and, and keep everybody going, you know. Right, right. Yeah. So uh, how about the composition of, of the band coming out to the dates in uh, Philly, Baltimore, and uh, Pittsburgh? Yeah, um, it's going to be a smaller version. Actually, when we go to Pittsburgh, we're playing with a band out in Pittsburgh. So okay. I'm taking um, with me Bitty and Arif, and then we're going to go out and rehearse that day okay. with what they, they have out there at the Shadow Lounge, a house band. Okay. When we go to Baltimore, we're going to take um, bass, drums, keyboards, and me and Bitty and Arif. And then when we go to Philly, it'll be I'm going to play, you know, keyboards. Uh, I think I'm by myself. Oh, there you yeah. go, right out there. I just thought about that. I'm by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Make, hey, but I'm sure you can handle making the sh- song shine. Yeah, the yeah. first time I went to L.A., I did it solo, uh-huh. like on with the Rose, like Donny Hathaway style. Oh, okay. So that yeah. was kind of cool. How, how about vocalists growing up? Uh, I mean, you mentioned some some great vocal groups, but how about yeah. yourself? What you know when you you played the their records that you said, "Wow, I'd, I'd love to sing like that." And yeah. Try to be Who right away. You? Well, for me, right away was um, Stevie Wonder. Right. Like I just think it was for me. Not only was it his voice, but it was the combination of everything. Like the fact that he he wrote the music, he sang the music, he arranged, he played. So you know. Me also coming from a context of where I played instruments, mm-hmm. that appealed to me. Earth, Wind & Fire was for the same reasons. They played the music, they wrote the music, and they sang the music. Right. That appealed. And then when I discovered Donny Hathaway, it was the same thing. When I discovered Curtis Mayfield, it was the same thing. They played, they wrote, they composed. And even when I discovered and started to learn about Marvin Gaye, though Marvin Gaye was in my house growing up, oh, he okay. now right. is he, to me, is like the pinnacle for me Mm -hmm. but i think growing up i took it for granted because it was my parents listened to it okay you know but it wasn't until i got older that i really began to understand him and know that like he was an unbelievable musician like he came into motown first Mm -hmm. as a musician first you know playing drums on all those old stuff so Mm -hmm. like he to me is like it's like probably uh marvin gay then you come down then you have like uh, Donnie, Stevie, and just Luther, just because to me Luther has like the voice. It is like the voice, right? You know, his technique and his tone and and what he does and how he's able to arrange voices and vocals to me is just incredible. And you did choose a Stevie song on here, if yeah. it's magic. And how, how'd you target that one after you know his whole catalog? And you probably dug all of it. Yeah, I did that whole era. It's my sister's favorite song by Stevie okay. Wonder. And so it was kind of like when we were growing up as kids, we used to open that. My parents had the the album, right. and we would open the album, and she would always turn to that and say, put on if it's magic, put on if it's magic. So when I thought about you know doing something, I kind of thought, oh, it would be nice to do this song because my sister liked this tune. And he went if, if he's heard it? Yeah, I think yeah. he did. I think um, actually two people played it for him. I know that Gary Bird over at WBAI oh, right. played it. Oh, yeah, that's his buddy. Yeah, yeah that's right. his buddy. So he Gary Bird is a big fan of that If It's Magic. And he, when we were on the air there, uh-huh. he turned to me that night and, and that day and he said, I'm actually going to play it for Stevie tonight. And oh, I was so like, that's oh. great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, Gary Bird, fastest talker, but still never stumbles. Oh, my guy. God, yeah. he's amazing. Right, yeah. So um, why don't we get into another song? Okay. You know, since we, we, you know, I'm going to change my mind right here. All right. Since we were talking about Stevie, I had another one picked. Ah. But uh, we'll listen to uh, If It's Magic. Oh, okay. And then we'll come back with uh, more music and discussion with Marlon Saunders. Go to his website, marlonsaunders.com. And uh, if you're able to uh, come out to the shows in the next couple weeks, uh, go to the tour dates and check it out and bring some extra money and support an independent brother putting out music and you know 
Definitely. Enjoy the show, yeah. So this is uh, Marlon Saunders, If It's Magic. Stevie Wonder song, originally written by Stevie. Done yeah. properly right there. <laughs> Thank 2004 you, style. Marlon Saunders from Enter My Mind. And uh, I'm told it's one take, right? Yeah, we did it yeah. in one take. And uh, who else worked with you on that release? Uh, Jiro Yoshida, jazz guitarist extraordinaire. Um, and also uh, Carl the Rock Carter right. on bass. He's we, based out of Bridgeport. Yes, yeah, he is. our hometown here. So, yeah, yeah, big ups. That's right, to Bridgeport, Connecticut. Bridgeport. Yeah, we got a ways to go before we get down to New York style. But, I don't know, <laughs> but it's it's getting there. It's getting there. <laughs> what, what's it like? Uh, I mean, you're based out of the New York City area right now. Yeah. And uh, how long have you been there working? And, and I've actually doing been your there like 14 years now. I came in 1990. Okay. So I really kind of jumped into what I would consider myself being like a successful working New York musician where my name kind of got around, right. I would say like in 92. It's kind of like where I kind of started breaking into the session world. And, and So how, how tough is that in New York City to, to it's get, hard. get in there? Yeah, it's hard. I mean, it's really, really hard. And, you know, I was lucky in, in, in many respects. Mm -hmm. You know, when I came there, I just kind of lucked into a lot of the work. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I think it's... A combination of things. I shouldn't just say I was lucky because it was luck, and I certainly, had, you know, had practiced and done the work I needed to do to back it up. You right, know, and I right. could go in and, and do what was needed because I had did the work. You know, and I think that's part of the, part of the reason too about what allows me to stay in the industry and and to have some some level of success is just you know staying at it and working at it. And and I think too, you know, just the overall sense of if you love what you do, that yeah. comes across you know all the time people right. people will respond to something if you if you if they can sense that you love it you know and that that is coming from a place that's honest so so people can go to marlinsaunders.com and uh if you want to find out all the great uh work uh, marlin has done besides his own solo cd you can click on the discography and you know <laughs> we're talking billy joel sting yeah. and uh you know, writing a song on Barry White's record. Yeah. One of her favorite records, by the way, too. So, really? <laughs> yeah. We got that CD at home, too. So, um, Wow. How, how'd I'm you get humbled. together to work with um, cats like that? Um, you know, you just, I think just the calls. It's like somebody right. knows someone and they're looking for, a, you know, a specific singer or a specific person to fill that, that job that day. Mm -hmm. And they say, oh, you know, so I say, Oh, you know what? I think you should call that brother Marlon. I think he's good for that. Right. You know. So you did some tours with Billy Joel too, right? Yeah, I yeah. did the record, and then I toured with him, with that, which was right. cool. And you know, a funny story is, um, I got the Nine Inch Nails gig uh -huh. for MTV, <laughs> uh, the Grammys, I think it was, something like that. And I got the gig because they saw me on a, a video of this girl who I sang with, named Robin, who came. She was on like BMG or something. Okay. And I was growing my hair out actually for the record I think at the time and they called me and they said you know you, you've been picked to, to do this gig with Nine Inch Nails you know and I thought wow and they said but you have to what did they, they said to me what's your hair like and I said oh you know I'm growing it out they were like you have to shave your hair because my hair was shaved at the time okay. I said shave my head they said yeah and they saw you and they picked you because you you know your head was shaved and I was like alright <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, so so uh, you know, how about a, a song chosen by Barry White to do on his record? That has to be a oh real my big God, honor, right? That was yeah. like an unbelievable high, you know. Did you submit a lot of songs throughout I did. the years? Yeah, throughout the years, I had submitted a lot of things, and to be honest with you, I learned a lot through through working with him and writing with another gentleman um, by the name of Aaron Schroeder, who taught me a lot about pop songwriting. Okay, and you know, I. Uh, Submitted the first stuff and had all these melodious chords and all this stuff. And Barry White, you know, said, uh, ah, it's too many chords, you know. Just make it real simple. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just simple that you can sing it back, you know. Right, and I finally right. understood, you know, that, you know, you, you want to write songs that people can relate to and connect to. And they want they want to be able to sing it, right. you know. So, so when Barry White gives it the okay, you know, how quick is the phone call back home and in Maryland. Oh, it was say, like, hey, I'm on. <laughs> it was like the, like, I got this and listened to him on the, you know, the machine, right. you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I mean, it, it's got to be uh, a great, great thrill, as always, to, to be doing your music first and foremost with your own record. And, uh, you, know, you know, 
I was making a comment on the presentation of all mm. everything you put out always seems to have artistic appeal and a lot of thought gone into it. Wow. Because we see a lot of things come through it. I mean, <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, that's not that way, mm-hmm. but it's all it's refreshing to do that. Um, we should give some credit. I'm sure you know yeah. yourself and other people have, yeah. who put together the uh, the liner notes and photos. Well, a lot of that has to do with um, the photos were taken by Bill Wiley. And um, then the layout was actually a lot has to do with Al Harmon Jr., who was on board at the time. And also Michael Dumas was very responsible for a lot of how things are laid out. And then, of course, um, the graphic designer, Aaron Erwin Garostiza, okay. put it all together in that sense. Yeah. But a lot of how things are laid out and how things are presented comes from my manager, Michael, because he certainly will let me know. Right. What he's thinking. <laughs> so, so much respect to Michael Dumas right there. And, uh, you know, we have uh, Marlon Saunders in here in the studio. And uh, his second CD release, a uh, single release off the record in my mind, is called Inspiration. Yeah. And uh, how, how did you go about choosing, choosing your particular single releases? You know, it's interesting because um, the first one, WHUR was really responsible for really yeah, that's Howard, right? picking Howard, Howard University, University yeah. because they kept playing it and they kept getting responses on it. Mm-hmm. So then when they reported it back to the retail marketer, he was like, yo, I think we need to go with this single and just kind of go because we're getting a lot of love from HUR on it. Right. They're spinning it. So that's how we went. And then with Inspiration, it was kind of the same thing. We kind of started to have a buzz in Chicago on Inspiration Okay. with the steppers, you know, yeah, the whole step right. thing. So they were they're stepping to it, so... So, so, so you're going to work in some steps for your own video? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So, hey, let's give it a listen right now. This is the new single from uh, Marlon Saunders, Enter My Mind. It's called Inspiration. And we'll come back and talk uh, once again with Marlon Saunders. Yeah. Another great song from Enter My Mind that is Inspiration, Thanks. which is the current single from uh, Marlon Saunders. And uh, we were talking off air about the thrill of uh, hearing your music on radio, which nothing, yes. nothing's like that, right? There's yeah. nothing like hearing your music on the radio. <laughs> right, right. It's a, I mean, it's like a rush. It's almost, you know what I mean? Because you grow up with the radio, and uh, it's such a part of our lives, you know. And, to, and then to hear your own music coming back at you, it's like, whoa. How, how about the first CD or, or record you ever bought growing up? Remember? Yes, I do. Yeah. I remember my first. Well, actually, for me, it was the first uh, album I ever bought was Spirit, with my own like money that I had saved. Was Spirit by Earth Wind, Earth, Wind and Fire? Earth, Wind yeah. and Fire. Wow. Oh man, I'll yeah. never forget that. So, so they're they're still going strong touring. I saw them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and that's right. No music, and you know when when you're listening to radio i mean you write all your stuff and and perform it mm-hmm. when you listen to the radio today what's really getting the the trumpets playing about them and all the airplay yes what goes through your mind anything or um i'm just amazed right. that the, i'm amazed at like the how little is played right that's the thing that amazes me is like Wow, it's the same music over and over and over. Not that there's not great music being played, but mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of great music that we don't get to hear. Yeah, you right. know, I mean, that the average listener doesn't get to hear. I get to hear it because I go out of my way to you know to look for it, and I, I happen to be in the industry where I can. I'm asking people, what's some good stuff to hear? What's not being heard? Mm-hmm. But I think you know the average person that's just kind of turning on the radio, turning on the TV, video stations looking to hear things it's just it's the same thing over and right. you know when you go to when I go around and I tour and I talk to people they say that they tell you yeah. oh yeah it's so refreshing to hear something that's not the same thing over and over mm-hmm. but there are some you know some great stuff that I hear that I on the radio but I, it's always the same you know but I think it's cool you know that you write your own material you're heavily involved in everything and I mean you're a young cat and putting out a record because a lot of times you know, people put out the records that don't write it. They put out a record. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's not a lot of talk about in the conversation about the CD. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to name names, but it, no, I mean. I, just, got, I know yeah. what you're saying. I yeah, know what you're saying. But yeah. it's refreshing to have you come by. And, well, you know, I appreciate cool. that. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Right. So so also, you know, you're a vocal uh, professor, yeah. teacher at a That's prestigious. That's so funny. I'm a professor. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> 
There you go. And right? I'm just, I'm really right. silly, you know, in the classroom. Take my shoes off, run around. Yeah. It's good. You Man, know? I wish I had teachers like that when I was growing <laughs> up. It's good. But uh, at the prestigious Berkeley College of Music up in uh, Boston area. Yeah. How, how did you get affiliated with that? You know, they have started this whole new concept at, at the uh, Boston College of Music where they really want to have um, artists who are involved in mm-hmm. the industry come to teach the kids, which makes total sense. Right. You know, it makes sense that you're at a, a contemporary school that deals with contemporary music. You need to have teachers there on the on the faculty who can really, really ID with the students, who can tell them what it's like to be out in the in the world doing music, creating music, making the music that these kids want to do. So, so, so you went to school there too? I went to school there for two and a half years. And did you study their voice? I studied uh, composition and arranging. Okay. Voice was my instrument. Okay. Because you had to declare uh, an instrument. But um, I was referred. Someone referred me for the job, and then I had to go up and meet with the, the deans and the head of the voice department and audition, so to speak. You know. And they called me and said, you got the job. And I was like, cool. So you got any potential uh, students for, for background singers? I got some really, really good students. That's Actually, I'm going to do a, a plug for uh, an artist who is out now, who okay. was a student of mine, who's just come to New York. His name is Adam Joseph. Okay. And uh, his CD is called I Am I, I Be, I think okay. it is. It's a really, really good CD. Okay. Yeah. So Adam Joseph. We Adam gotta, Joseph. we got to get him playing on the show. Yeah, I'll have yeah. to def- definitely have him look you up. Right. And, uh, you know, how about, how about uh, yeah, I mean, you're balancing, you know, teaching. Do you, when do you uh, teach up there and tour? I'm there Monday, Tuesday, uh, and I come back on Wednesdays. And as I said, we've been off um, touring for two months, and I just started back at the, at the school at the end of January. So it's all going to be a new thing since right, right. the record. I haven't, you know, this combination of teaching and touring is about to start now. <laughs> right, right. So we're gonna see how it all comes together, right? Oh, yeah. I'm sure it'll work together. Yeah. You know, you know yeah. the album's just an incredible record. Enter my Thank mind, you. Marlon Thank Saunders. Uh, his website, MarlonSaunders. dot com, and uh, we we were speaking before. You got some folks all over the world digging the record. Yeah, uh, licensee amazing. out in UK, in the UK, and we yeah. just um, you know sealed it in Korea as well, and. Um, it's just amazing, you know. Now, how how does that exactly work for yourselves? Do you, you know, do it's, you send them a CD, and we've been very lucky. Mm-hmm. People have contacted Michael, my manager, right. and stre- you know, really stressed that they liked the the uh, CD, mm-hmm. and they were interested in trying to work something out in order to get it into that territory. Okay, we've right. been really, really blessed in that sense. Now you play uh, keyboards, any. And saxophone too, still? Or? So I I have a saxophone. I, I fool around with it. Um, I don't play it as much as I should. Right, right. You know, but <laughs> when I was when I was on my game, I used to play saxophone, clarinet. Uh, I played all the saxophones. I used to play clarinet. I used to play bassoon. Played uh, yeah, keyboards. I played a little percussion. You know. So so well-rounded musician. Yeah. yeah. When I'm on top of my right. game, you know, if I, if I had like a good six to nine months to just kind of be in a room right. and just shed, right. then I could really, really be on top of my game. Then again. Maceo Parker might have to look over his shoulder. Oh, I don't right? know about all that. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, how about the sequencing of the songs off the CD? Um, yeah. A lot of thought into that? You know, I actually left, what we did was after we recorded the the list of songs that we recorded, because we recorded more than 14, right. we just kind of took about 35 different people in different age groups, you know, Like um, for love, okay. Like even like across the board. Like I would think, I thought to myself, like ah, you know, people that kind of grew up, uh, like, you know, uh, in the seventies and so and beyond may like it, but a lot of kids liked for love. Yeah, you know, which is well, that's good to turn them on to that. Yeah, and right. cooling. Everyone across the board loved cooling. Right. I, I got to ask you. We'll, we'll change change tracks from music. What do you like to do and kick back on on your free time? Free time. Hmm. What is free time? <laughs> um, I, well, I actually like to, um, I work out. Uh-huh. I shouldn't say I like to work out, but I work right. out because right. just to stay in shape. But also, too, it really just channels my energy. Mm-hmm. Um, I like to read. I love to read. I okay. do a lot of reading. 
Um, I love movies. Uh, I like to watch movies. Um, and I actually um, just like to write. Okay. You know, I love writing just for the sake of doing it. How about, how about traveling down on this, this tour, uh, Pittsburgh, Baltimore? Yeah. What are you bringing along to listen to on the way down there? Uh, definitely some Sam Cooke. Um, I'm definitely going to bring some Lightning Hopkins because I'm really, really listening to a lot of Lightning Hopkins uh-huh. these days. Um, Stevie from 70 to 78, the whole collection. Right. All of Donny Hathaway, uh, Marvin Gaye, you know, what's going on, let's get it on. Um, you know, there'll probably be all the Michelle and Deggio Cello. Um, Donnie, the colored section. I always bring that with me. It's going to be a nice ride down there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to put your Earth record in the, in the mix. Yeah, yeah. I put mine in the mix. Right, right. I put mine in the mix. Yeah, yeah. So the, let's uh, give one quick uh, run through of, of the upcoming dates for our audience. If they okay. Want to check you out. Um, you've got Pittsburgh coming up. Pittsburgh is on the twenty third. Okay. The Shadow Lounge. The twenty fifth is Baltimore. The New Haven Lounge. Um, we're in Philadelphia, May first. Solo piano for that? Solo or that? piano. Okay. Um, I can't remember where the name of it. Oh, and May 7th and 8th, we're in L.A., the Temple Bar, and then the Little Temple Bar. And uh, then May 21st, we're in Brooklyn at the Five Spot. Five Spot, okay. Yeah. 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 And everything, you know, I, t- I tested your memory. <laughs> <So> I, <laughs> I mean to put you on the spot, but, uh, <laughs> but it's all up on the website. It'll be there on the website, and, yes. And uh, marlinsaunders.com and the discography up there. All the great work you've done with uh, other great artists. And uh, mm. Do you still do session work? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, man, you, you're doing it all. <laughs> yeah. Well, you yeah. know, I, I enjoy I mean, I really love love session work. I love, right. I love what I do. I'm, I feel very, very blessed and very lucky to be able to say – that I go to work to play. I mean, I go to work to do what I grew up doing all my life. Do you, you when know? you go in before to do a session, do you get the the music ahead of time? No. Most of the time? No, or no? it's They're just, just right like there. Right there. And right there on the spot. Right. Yeah. Just give you the lyrics and get a feel for the they music. Give you, yeah. Sometimes they give you the lyrics. You know, if it depends. Sometimes it may be a session where they say, okay, come up with some parts. You know. Do you have any favorite artists you work with who are really... You know, nice and respectful for background vocalists in the studio, and you know. You mean in terms of recording artists themselves? Yeah, they yeah. stand out. That you know. Oh, I really when I did when I worked with Sting, I thought that was incredible because he had about um, twelve of New York's like finest session singers mm-hmm. there, and just the level of respect he had for the singers, and and the the fact that he had a sense of what he wanted, but he was really really open to suggestions, you know. Mm-hmm. I thought that was incredible. Um, I thought that was really cool. Uh, and I, I, I like the way Bobby McFerrin works with vocalists oh, and, okay. and his his ability to see and hear the, the sound of each individual and, and, and make you feel um, welcomed with right, whatever right. you do, you know. And I think that's, a, that's an, an unbelievable... Uh, ability. Did he do work out here or back in San Francisco? In New York. In New York. I, I've okay. done work with him in New York in terms of recording, and then I've toured with him you know, okay. for a while. Right. So, uh, you know, most importantly right now, head on over to MarlonSaunders.com, enter my mind, and uh, we've got to thank Marlon Saunders for coming by the yeah. upper room in WVOF. Thank and you. Your manager, Michael Dumas, right there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, keeping things rolling steady for you. And, oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. And uh, if you just tuned in and uh, you've missed a portion of the interview, we'll be re airing it for three to four days and nights at Upper Room with Joe Kelly dot com. And, you know, that rolls about six times a day. Great. So, yeah. You'll be all over the place. We love it. We love it. Yeah. We appreciate it. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So have, have a nice time on the tour. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, man. Hitting some nice places. Yeah, I'm looking and, forward yeah. to it. So uh, let's see. We'll, we'll go out with. Uh, for love and then go right into premonition and a little later on we'll uh, listen to some jazz hold music and okay get it all covered cool man so thanks marlon no problem